Advisors, Carl Rove. Carl Rove, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You bet. Thanks, Megan. All right, so let's start with this uh, latest claim by the Vice President Joe Biden that he basically schooled President Bush and uh, told him, listen, you may consider yourself a leader, but turn around, no one's following you. Uh, a lot of people from the White House, which you were in when President Bush was there, have come out and said, that just didn't happen. What's your memory of it? Yeah, it didn't happen. Look, Joe Biden does this. I remember this a couple of years ago when he made a similar claim. Joe Biden said, for example, that he spent hours with the president. Uh, Joe Biden was never alone for the, with the president for more than a few moments. There was staff in the room at all times. He never said these kind of things. I hate to say it, but he's a serial exaggerator. If I was being unkind, I'd say he's a liar. But it is a habit he ought to drop. You'll notice every one of these incidents has the same structure. Joe Biden courageously raises the impudent question. The president befuddledly answers. And Joe Biden drives home the dramatic response. And, I mean, it just, it's his imagination. It's a made-up fictional world. He ought to get out of it and get back to reality. Really? So you're saying he just made this thing up out of whole cloth with he, no basis in he, reality? He, he, he's making these things up out of whole cloth. And, uh, you know, if you look back at him, I mean, look. Joe Biden is spending hours, he said, with President Bush. I mean, please. I mean, the, the members of Congress might spend, you know, a significant amount of time with the president if you added up all the meetings that they were in together with other people. But the implication that he leaves is that he and the president were sitting there in the Oval Office. He was tutoring the president. He was asking him the critical questions that no one was willing to confront him with. I mean, this is, this, with all due respect to the vice president, these are the kinds of things you can get away with if you are a United States senator or a backbencher in the U.S. House of Representatives. You should not exaggerate and lie like this when you're the vice president of the United States. States. Does this not happen where a senator would spend, in his words, hours with the president in the Oval Office? How is that unusual? Well, it's not unusual for somebody to spend a considerable block of time with the president, but I think there are very few presidents who spend hours with somebody in the Oval Office, particularly, a, with all due respect, a blowhard like Joe Biden was. I mean, this guy is, I've seen him in some meetings when he came to the White House. He was, uh, you know, he, 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 he was you know, would have outbursts and say something that didn't really make much sense. This is not the kind of guy who becomes the confidant of any president of either party, particularly if it's the president of the other party that you represent. And Carl, would there be a note taker there? I mean, because I know some of the White House sure. aides have said, I went back and looked at the notes of every meeting he had, right. uh, President Bush had with Joe Biden, and I didn't see anything right. to back up any of these right. claims. Would it have been in notes? Would somebody have been keeping notes of such sure. meetings? Absolutely, absolutely. There would be a note taker in the room. I thought it was interesting. Andy Card, who was the chief of staff, said he didn't recall any meeting, such meeting like this. Candy Wolf, who was the head of congressional liaison, these are the two officials most likely to be in there, the head of congressional liaison and the chief of staff. I've talked to other members of the White House staff who uh, both several years ago when this first emerged and then in the last couple of days, and no one has any re re recollection of anything remotely akin to what Vice President Biden says he was routinely saying and doing in the White House. You know, Carl, this doesn't, it's not getting a lot of play. Do you think, do people not care? If, if, if you, as you claim here, the Vice President of the United States is absolutely flat out lying about a, a conversation he claims he had with President Bush, and not just one conversation, but other conversations, why doesn't anyone care? Yeah. Well, first of all, could you imagine Dick Cheney as vice president in 2001 coming in and saying, well, I had these kind of conversations with uh, Bill Clinton or Al Gore or uh, during the previous eight years, and here's what I told him. And, 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 and if, uh, if Gore or Clinton said that's not accurate, don't you think the media would be all over it? I think part of this is, is that it's the Obama administration and the media has given them a pass. I think the other part of it may be that some of the media know, look, this is a guy whose 1988 presidential campaign was derailed because he was found to be copying plagiarizing a speech by Neil Kinnock, the leader of the British Labor Party, uh, and recounting an episode in Kinnock's life as if it were in his own life, involving, I believe, it was a coal miner relative or something. So this is a guy who has a reputation for embellishing mildly, I would say, embellishing the truth. And he is doing so this time around, and the media ought to pay attention to it. The man is the vice president of the United States, and he may be Joe Biden, but he's still the vice president of the United States and ought to be held to a, to a higher standard. Well, up next, Carl Rove on the presidential bow controversy. Did President Obama bow to the Saudi king or didn't he?